welcome back. Uh, today we're just going to enjoy some good old speed chess um, in a slightly different way. So, without further ado, uh, let's have some fun. I created a user style just to make the stream more exciting for you and I here. So, um, yeah, this looks a little different than chess, but trust me, the pieces still move the same way. Um, and, you know, it's not blindfold chess. I debated, you know, maybe I wanted to do a blindfold stream. But then it occurred to me uh, we could have just as much fun without actually doing blindfold chess. And just, you know, dealing with a slightly different way of representing the pieces on the board seemed like a much more fun experiment, to be honest. Um, so I'm debating what to do about this uh, Viridian H6 threat. Um, I don't remember all the characters' names, unfortunately, or I'd be entirely relying on this kind of uh, nomenclature. Um, but either way, this is pretty fun. We're already having a great time. And we didn't even have to like do anything fancy here, other than creating the user style in the first place. Um, which, thanks to some online conversion utilities, wasn't such a difficult process. Um, so I want to open up the queen side here. Jeez, oh, I'm not so familiar with this structure, to be honest. Um, I sense that putting my pawn on e5 probably isn't going to wreck me, but I don't know to be... Uh, so where do I put these pieces? Like, I want to push for b5, but b5 also looks like it's going to cost me material. Wait, why don't I just push f5 here? Try to undermine this pawn chain, and then strike at it from underneath. So we got, this is attacked, this is building pressure. Um, if I could just land my other knight here, maybe I'll have something. Uh, this is the obvious threat here. Oh, well, now I can just like blunt my opponent's attack entirely. Um, this is very st oh shit. <laughs> oh well, um, I got lucky. Here, let's pull this back so we got this covered. Yeah, that could have been pretty bad, <laughs> to put it mildly. All right, so let's hit the knight. The knight's just going to go back. Oh, actually, this works a lot better than I thought it did, I think. Do I take? To take is a mistake, they always say, but what do they know? Um... Hmm. This is a dilemma. The dilemma is that I like taking things, but taking seems unsound here. Taking is very unsound here. What am I talking about? We're just going to run away. And then the next time he pushes, I can push the other of these two pawns, and I'm safe. Um, then I can slowly build an attack over here. This looks so ridiculous, and I'm not just talking about the pieces. Um, the actual formation I've got going here um, leaves a lot to be desired. So I'll just plant my knight up here. Okay, what's the bishop doing there? Seriously, what's that about? Okay, yeah, you did spook my knight and forced to move it away. Um, I guess I'll go back to the file here. And I'm tempted to push b5 even though that's a gambit. Yeah, let's do it. 
Nothing ventured, nothing gained. This is obviously a gambit. What's less obvious is if it actually gains anything, or just causes me to, like, just give up material for nothing. Which is par for the course around here, isn't it? So, I want to hit that. Let's just bring both rooks on the A file. Yeah, feels like I got something going here. But that could just be a hallucination. Either way, this looks fun. So, uh, well, hang on. Um, Alright, yes, I'll accept your exchange there. Which should help me activate on... Well, okay, you're activating on the same file as I am here. So I'm going to actually pile up on this file instead. Which is not going to lead anywhere, but it'll feel good. It'll feel like I've done the right thing. <laughs> um, so you got two pieces protecting this, I've got four attacking it. So what's the plan? What's the plan, Stan? Oh, duh. Um. Okay. Now I'm gonna push on this side of the board, exploiting this um, loose piece on H3. And there's a free pawn. Brilliant. <laughs> That's the overworked piece in a nutshell. It happens in every position. Um, what? You actually want to exchange? I can't imagine why. Um, okay. So... Let's bring the queen out here, still protecting the knight. Our knight's going to go through some gyrations here if I'm lucky. It might actually land on c4 somehow. Oh. Well, now I've got a fortress. Um, this queen's off sides. I've got this square covered by the knight. My rook covers everything, so... Uh, my queen's free to do whatever it wants to do on this side of the board, which is probably just help advance this pawn. Um, but also I'd like to get a, one of these weak points. Alright, that's a sacrifice. I have to take it. But I still think I got everything covered, so... This is weird. Um, I'm going to probably just bring this back here. I'm so confused. And only half of that's due to the pieces choice. I'm sensing a perpetual check in my future. Alright, so who did I just, like, have an interesting game against here, I wonder. I am made it on G8. I have no way to defend that. That's too bad. Alright, so well played, V-Bar. What happened to the AI? I was playing the minigame. Um, yeah, no, it struggled badly with that. It did appear to make progress, but um, unfortunately, 
Uh, it just wasn't learning. So as enthralling, as enticing and such as that was to watch, uh, I terminated it because it wasn't doing well. But I might come back to it as the library developer is working on making their library more accessible. Yes, yeah, so obviously I blundered at the end there, but I didn't... S oh. Maybe there was a way I could have used that promoted pawn. Um, like, queen a1 didn't mate. b5 check was the key here. How does b5 check resolve this? So obviously b5 is covered. Um, why don't they just go king a5? I couldn't solve this. Oh, here it is. Queen b6 mate. That's hard, because the pawn used to be on b6. Yeah. So technically I had a win there. But good luck to me trying to spot that. But what a roller coaster. Apparently he was very winning, yeah, when I blundered the queen, and I protected against it next move. Um, what else was missed, I wonder? h6 was good. Knight f6, not appropriate, because apparently I could just take on g3. I thought this was too messy after knight takes, and this is a knight sacrifice, but it felt like, I mean, look at all these kais of the same color, or in ascending color, just all sitting on the back rank. Apparently this lack of development is not something that's going to fluster me during the game. Apparently, uh, I'm just better here. But that's very difficult to prove. Alright. Uh, let's play our first move. Alright, I got a Scandinavian defense. And probably Bishop G4, right? No. Now Bishop G4? Okay, no Bishop G4 this game. Um... Alright, so they've played this... Now with the pawn on d5, this is called a triangle system, but there's no pawn on d5 here. Um, so we'll just take the center as per normal and uh, hope that something positive just naturally develops from our superior development. Um, So I'll line up the rook with the queen. Okay, yeah, he's putting pressure on my center, as he should. But I'm not going to be afraid of that. Um, as for can uh, whether there's some way I can take advantage of this, I'm not sure. Huh. Um, I want to take here, and if he takes on e4, I take on b6, and I'm hitting the queen. So, it's a battle of intermezzos here. Now, he could take here and here and hit my queen. And then I've got a pawn on c7, he's got a knight on d1. Um, or, yeah, he could just respond to my intermezzo directly. Um, but now I get to play bishop b5 check. So, who's laughing now? <laughs> um, this is sharp. So, how do I resume an attack here? Oh wait, so the queen is the only piece protecting the bishop, right? So if I happen to get the queen, like, distracted, it won't be protecting the bishop anymore. And this helps me also activate my queen along the d-file. So if queen takes f4, bishop takes c6, and bishop takes a8. Um, but yeah, we are playing using this set because people kept insisting um, that I should use a 2D board. So, we're using a 2D board, guys. Hope you're happy. Oh, it's, a, it's a great 2D board. People should use it more often. Um, now, 
I can't just let this hang on b5 indefinitely. I do need to do something about that hanging. Um, I wish I had some tactical resource. Oh, hey, here we are. There it is. There's the resource that allows me to delay castling. Right, so the bishops moved off of e7. Um, that'd be great. Oh, my knight can actually make it over here, but only by way of d4. Um, still, that's not bad. This does allow him to castle. Uh, I don't want to see that, but I don't have much choice, do I? Is there some way I can keep delaying castling here? Some shenanigans I can pull. That delays castling for a move. And this allows me to get the bishop for the knight. But does allow him to castle. But once castled, I still have a lot of pressure on this position, so... Um, we'll pull back first, but that's where we're going to be hitting next. Um, and the question is, what's the best way to get there? Note, if knight e4, I can pin the knight. So... And if some other move, I'm debating queen g4, or queen d4, or queen h5, or something. Yeah, I guess my real threat here is to play queen g4 and then queen takes e6. Yeah, I think I was debating doing blindfold chess, and this seems much more engaging. Um, and it does force me to clarify my thoughts, as opposed to just shuffling pieces. Now the other thing is I am in time trouble, um, but I don't think that's going to be such a big deal here, because I'm not too afraid of this knight. Almost all my pe opponent's pieces move vertically and horizontally, um, so it should not be a big deal for me to predict what's going to happen next. Or it should not be difficult for me to predict my opponent's moves, or at least see what they're threatening. Um, but yeah, for what it's worth, uh, this is a nice open position, and um, liquidating pieces, getting into an endgame of bishop versus knight, isn't always attacked for getting a, a draw. Um, right, so that's sensible. I'm going to play this anyway, and then play this. And we'll coordinate the bishop back this way instead. Um, oops, I just gave away the a-pawn. Because I've missed that this is going to be hanging at the end of the line. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's develop over here. and then hit the knight. Not that it has to move, but it's a spooky move. Uh, okay, we'll pull back. Now that's a well-timed strike. Um, cover e2 and then allow me to go back here. Um, interesting. This is sharp. This is very sharp. So that's a pin? Question mark? I don't know. This is complicated. Oh, I could have taken that. That was a free piece.
Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> uh, this is a good try on my part. I played well. I just didn't have enough to win this. Um. And so the question is, can I draw this? And the answer is probably. Hopefully. I'm not sure. Um, this sucks. Right, because I allowed him to play rook c7. And now I get to hold the 4 versus 3 thing. So let's at least not get a space deficit. Um, and then hold this square. And hold it. And continue holding. And trade a pawn and continue holding the square and continue holding the square alright um, let's see I don't remember my basic king and pawn endgames but I think that one's lost Now, possibly g3 is a huge blunder. I'm not sure. I thought I knew what I was doing, then I played it, and then I realized I probably don't know what I'm talking about here. Oh, but thankfully he doesn't want to push me on it. So, uh, this should not be too hard. Now, this would be a place for a third rank defense, except, well, damn. I think I blew it. Pretty sure I blew it here. My king is on the short side of the pawn, but this is not going to be easy. Assuming it can be held. Now this is your typical draw. <sighs> and the reason it's a draw is because I can keep going back and harassing the sea pawn. takes a single step away from it and we attack the pawn again. Wow! Uh, okay. Well, we're gonna put that... Uh, yeah. We're a streamer. We are, in fact, a streamer. Sorry, I was in Zen mode there. I couldn't see that he was attempting to communicate with me. Um, but yeah. What an endgame. Um... So let's try to take the center here. Um, not totally sure what's going on, but what's new? Um, C5 feels wrong, but I'm not sure what else to try here. Oh, this is lined up my queen with that bishop. Um, hmm. Something about this feels very not right, but we will push onward. Um, um, yeah, this 
he's got like all my pawn breaks covered, which is kind of frustrating. I'm not sure where to put my pieces because I have no pawn breaks. This can't be right, but I'm not sure what right would be here. At least this way, if I suffer a space deficit, it won't hurt too bad. But um, it'd be good if I could like get in a pawn break somewhere. Oh, so I'm not the first person to have done this sort of venture, is what you're saying. That um, other people have done similar visual exercises. That's pretty cool. Um, they do say great minds think alike, but hard to imagine most people doing this. Um, yeah, I can push b5 here and take the c4 square. I don't really have a follow-up to this, but I'm not sure that I need one. So what now? What do we do? I wonder if there's a policy in general against um, streamers using Zen mode. Because, yeah, my opponent would like to have communicated with me, but um, I wasn't able to because I had Zen mode on. Um, I want to put my knight on c4, but I recognize it's not going to stay there very long if it ends up there. Um, c4 itself looks reasonable, but why push that right away? And I could just put the knight on a good square here first. And then I could decide, do I want to do knight a4, knight c4, knight d5? I've got my options open. Um, I've got connected pawns, and yeah, my opponent does oppose on the long diagonal, as it makes sense for them to do before I get knight c4 in. Um... This is bold. Don't try this at home, kids. Um, this is probably flawed, to be honest. Uh, my idea of trying to take the center by storm. But I'm playing ambitiously. And that's going to lead to me getting in trouble. Oh, why don't I push c4? Then at least my bishop has a home on c5. And uh, that also blunts this attack. So now I can drop my bishop back and put it here. Um, and this temporarily blocks a check on the first rank. Um, I wonder. There's a lot going on in this position. I feel like exchanging a set of rooks could somehow help me if I come up with a good tactic here. Uh, I don't have a way to support rook d8, so I'm just going to trade this rook. Um... And since my knight can't go anywhere else, it's going to go to a4. But that's not a bad square for the knight, because it hits the b2 pawn. And now what? Put the bishop on a good square. Just continue improving our worst place pieces. Um, oh, we got this nice discovery against the king, quite accidentally here. Um, I think this endgame is winning, no? Because I get the b-pawn. 
He's got to trade queens to get the tempo, but I think because the b-pawn's hanging, I think I'm in one move too quickly. I miscalculated. Thankfully, uh, this isn't a terrible thing, but um, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, so I guess we get a draw eventually. But I'm in severe time trouble, so my opponent deserves to try to win this. And we'll see if I can draw it, but um, certainly I accept a draw if offered, but it would be kind of foolhardy for me to offer a draw here because um, the time situation doesn't really merit it. But yeah, we had two very good games in a row here against a very formidable opponent. Um, All right, so is there no way I can orchestrate a g5 break? g5 is the next logical break here, but it seems kind of hard to instrument. I'm begging him to push f5, or I'm tempting him to. Uh, and he does push it, and I didn't see how effective that was until he pushed it, but... Um, okay. I seem to be, well, almost hanging the h-pawn. That was very close. Uh, yeah, this is not good. Okay, we'll protect against that. King f5. And if knight e7, I have to go back. What do I do? How do I play this? Um, right, I can't push f5 because his knight covers f5. This is tricky. Uh, now I can push F5? No, I can't. It feels tempting, but absolutely not. F5 can't be pushed there. Um. I'm curious to see how he's going to win this, because it actually looks winnable in light of just my d disaster of a position here. I don't know if the knight trade is terrible. I offer it anyway. Um, All right. Oh boy. Good game, well played. Yeah. Um, what an endgame lesson. This guy's excellent, to be honest. He's forcing me to think about things I don't typically think about. And he's playing a very strong positional game. Um, and the visualization, surprisingly, I'm starting to get accustomed to. And being forced to articulate my thoughts, I think in general, is being a good thing here. Um, well, I think we're ready to try something more ambitious, eh? Um, the elite bullet arena, because, you know, I qualify to get into that. Uh, no. No, let's pick a tournament. Um, a daily super blitz is fine. There's no increment here. There's a lot of really strong competition, so this is going to be great. Alright, 
So, okay, again, the pink one is the king. Just remember that. Uh, okay, so we'll play a queen's Indian, unless he plays queen f3. So here's a queen's Indian. Um, and then I could push like d4, or, I'm sorry, d5 and c5 and stuff. Um, now what's this knight g3 about? What's the knight doing there? And how do I make something positive happen on my side of the board because of that? So my knight protects e5, and I've got two pieces protecting d5. Um, so since he hasn't castled, I'm just going to attack. Okay, f4 is covered, so let's go this way instead. Wait, do I have two knights coordinating on d3? That is so nice. That is a very pleasant coincidence. Um, I'm going to put this knight there. In case I need to pull back, uh, my other knight will be right there to support it. If I don't need to pull back, um, this is a fork, but there's lots of other things I might be able to do here. This is a discovery. This is my knight hitting your queen. All right, so the king steps forward again. Um, it's not mate, but man, is it close. Double check. And mate in one threat. She deals with uh, another mate in one threat. She's probably going to play knight d5 or something. Another mate in one threat. Um, there's the mate in one. Okay, cool. Not bad. Maybe this tournament will be the last one for this stream. We're having a lot of fun, though. At least I am. Um, chess is fun. You have to have fun playing the game, because if you're not having fun, you're playing it wrong. Yeah, we got some interesting pieces. Uh, because Lee Chess is played in a web browser, you can apply a user style to any web page in a web browser. And that um, applies to the game page here. So, um... Yeah, we get this wonderful opportunity thanks to technology uh, that you'd not get on most uh, chess pages. Granted, I'm probably the only person using this particular style, but um, it works for me. So this is great. Um, So, we're going to discourage e5. Not that he's intending to play e5 anywhere anytime soon, but... Um, okay, he gets the e5 square. So now what? I guess... I don't often play this knight g3 sort of thing, but here it seems warranted. But he'll probably just... No, he didn't take it. Okay. I'm very confused. Oh. Oh, Cheapo City. Um. Yeah. Turns out he's actually trying for a pretty standard Cheapo. So let's just go back and protect that square. And see if I can induce some weakness elsewhere. Note, I do have a double attack on this pawn, so if he pushes that, I just win a pawn. And now I'm up a pawn. GG, get wrecked. <laughs> um, chess is not so easy, but um, sometimes it feels easy, doesn't it? Okay, so now he's moved that. Okay, I can't just win that somehow. I wish I could. Make this game a lot easier. 
Oh, really? Wait, wait a second. We can start liquidating some of the pieces here. And by some, I mean a lot. A lot of these pieces get traded off right away. He's got to do knight takes, or I just take here. Or I'm strongly menacing taking there. Because his king side falls apart. But... I don't know if I care about trying to checkmate him right away. I think maybe what I want to do is just trade off the bishops. And once those are traded, we'll just keep exchanging more and more things until my extra pawn just marches to victory. Um, it feels like the right thing to do here. Okay, so just bring this forward and try to trade these. He exchanges, we trade queens, I've doubled my pawns. Oh no, I have doubled pawns, everybody freak out. Um, but no, I'm in time pressure, I better move faster. Um, let's keep pushing. And do I have any tricks here? I don't know. This is a pretty nice trick, isn't it? Make all my opponent's pieces disappear, and then just march my king forward. There's another nice trick. You should know this one, guys. <laughs> um, okay, apparently my opponent's not diving headfirst into it. This gives us both a lot to think about here. Right, so I'm just gonna just take these pawns. Um, that's a mate in one. Don't walk into mate in one, folks. All right, so we're having a good tournament. Uh, we're in 298th place. Part of it might be that my um, my rating could be intimidating my opponent. I'm not sure. Um, all right, so a king pawn opening. I'll just go for mate on f2. Uh, um, only because like his. His setup is fairly, I don't know, innocuous, so I should start attacking instead of waiting for him to bring the attack to me. Now, this knight doesn't have anywhere it can go right away. So this gives me a... I'll just keep using free moves that he gives me to improve the placement of my pieces. Although this might not be a very well-placed pawn. In fact, that's a hanging pawn. He just could have taken it, but didn't. Um, so let's kick this knight before it becomes too menacing. And we'll push on the queen side instead of pushing on the king side. There's no law that says I have to push on the king side. Although you'd think there would be, given the way I play. Um, okay, we'll take the center. So I'm attacking his bishop. Still attacking his bishop, and my knight supports my bishop. And we trade material because I'm ahead. And we take another free pawn. And although we're in Zen mode, at this point I'm suspecting that my opponent is afraid of me. Um, and the reason for such suspicion is that they haven't really done anything too ambitious in this game. And I've been pushing and attacking the entire time, and they've just been, like, responding to my threats. Um, as opposed to trying to initiate some counter threat. So there's been ample opportunity for him to try to do something aggressive, and he just... that's not been his MO this game. 
I'm not saying that aggression has to be everybody's MO, but I'm just saying I think my opponent is running scared. Um, oh, I'm debating where to put this. D3 actually looks better than H3. So this hits the rook and this hits a fork, which forces a trade here. And every trade just brings me one step closer to having a protected passed pawn just race down and promote. Although we saw I messed up a game with a promotion earlier. Um, Alright, so he's only got one piece defending the queen, so this knight is effectively pinned. Um, right, he notices that as well, and decides uh, that being pressured such is not good for his position. Now his queen and rook are responsible for this knight. Um, so now I've got both my queen and rook protecting all this. His knight was protecting f3 and it's not protecting f3 so I just take f3. And um, do I take e4 or do I move around it? I'm not sure it matters. No, taking e4 is better, I think, because like there might be some positions where I want to take g3. Oh. Um. Do I have this check? King g1, knight h3, king h1. Yeah, this looks too fun to pass up. We're playing it. This might not checkmate, but boy does it look fun. Um, Because now he can't move any of this, and I'm still having this in reserve if I want to play it. Um... I should do something about possible back rank threats against me. Oh, hang on. His knight just stepped between his queen and the f1 square. And that's mate. Yeah, we beat a 1300, guys. So yeah, chess is fun. Um, okay, let's play this. What was this thing called again? Um, its name is escaping me. The system where, oh, the Budapest Gambit. Yeah, the thing where I get to show some aggression as early as move two and see whether or not my opponent knows any of the theory. Um, okay. Let's see if he trades his knight for my bishop. He doesn't have to trade right away, but... Um. Oh, uh-oh. If he does knight takes, I have to do pawn takes. Otherwise, I get pinned. Um, That could have been worse. Yeah, I have to do pawn takes here, which I really don't want to do. My pawns are very fragile. Um, that said, my knight in the center is not too bad, but it's not going to stay there very long, is it? That knight is going to be kicked, like, almost immediately. No? Okay, when's my opponent going to kick my knight? They're going to castle queenside, aren't they? That's not castling queenside. Um, man, if my king weren't so exposed, I might have some ideas here. Yeah, I've got a few moves to try to prepare something here, but man. Oh, we're just going to trade queens. I feel relieved. Very relieved. Um, I can't take on g2, because my position's terrible, but I can develop my pieces to reasonable-ish squares. 
If he castles, I might be able to... No, he doesn't castle. So I don't get a free pawn. Um, uh, this is not good. <laughs> this is not a good endgame, but bailing into an endgame was better than s trying to struggle through that middle game. So, I'll try to make something happen in the center. No promises. We might have to sacrifice something. Um, hmm. Oh wait, he's got f5 on tap, so I have to push f5 straight away. Otherwise I get hit by f5. Um, and now my king side collapses. Also, he's got this nice little thing uh, in reserve, so I have to move my king or my rook. But moving the rook's not going to abate this attack at all. Planting the bishop here and then pushing d5 myself might be a way to try to counter that. Um, Alright, so I've kind of locked the center, sort of. Still down a pawn. Still my position's pretty murky. Um, hmm. Alright. This doesn't really hang the pawn because I have b6 to recover it. Okay. I didn't think we'd actually end up here. Um... Well, this gets sharp. Let's play c5 first. And then maybe sack for some pawns. This is really weird. I'm not accustomed to playing this sort of material imbalance, but we're sacking a minor piece for three pawns um, in the hope that somehow the endgame will promise more chances than what we're currently looking at. Um, so that's pawn number two. We've got the bishop for two of the so we sacrificed two minor pieces, collected two pawns. I thought I was going to get a third pawn here somewhere. I could have miscalculated something, but hard to imagine me doing that in this circumstance. Um, oh. Oh, that's clever. Uh, wow. Okay. That kind of hurts. So I have to retreat. And he gives me pawn number three. <laughs> uh, I think that was a move out of generosity there. Uh, and not at all exploiting the time differential. Uh... Which, I completely forgot, there's no increment here, so I'm screwed. Um, but we tried. We endeavored mightily. Uh, oh, we won. Okay. Well, in that case, that I had that planned all along. Uh, so yeah, four wins in a row. Brilliant. My opponent deserved to win that, but... Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Take it. Um, well, this is a thing, apparently. I don't know what my opponent's doing. It looks horrendous, to be honest. Wait, doesn't that just give up a pawn? Immediately? No, that doesn't. It's not so simple, but... Um, okay. 
Even though I didn't win a pawn, this still feels good. Because what's he going to do? He still needs a plan. We wouldn't have anybody playing a game without making a plan now, would we? That's not something I would ever do, playing without a plan, right? Um, okay, this makes some sense. He's trying to put pressure on my center. But I've got this nice discovery against the queen now. So he's going to move his queen straight away rather than deal with the pressure. Um, and in so running away gives me a free hand to do what I want. Um, so I guess what I want is just to win a rook. Um, so that's me winning a rook. Oh, or not. Just kidding. I thought I was winning a rook. Okay, well, either way, this looks pleasant. So this is pinned, so um, this is not going to move. Alright, we'll snap that. Um, yeah, this is weird. My opponent's being so compliant. Hmm, I'll just take all the things. Okay, got some check over here. Um, right, I saw that coming. Maybe. Probably not. We're gonna sack, because I'm in time pressure. Um, that excuses anything I do. Like here, I'm just losing or forcing a queen exchange, which I don't want to force. So again, we'll just blame the time pressure. Uh, that's a fork. If we get enough forks, then maybe we'll win. But almost certainly not. Also, we're down a minute. All right, that's a pawn. Go back. Try to make another fork. Rooks belong in open files, and that's an open file, so the rook belongs on it. Um, he's got rook g6, doesn't he? Rook g6 is kind of annoying here. Um, There it is. There's the rook g6. I so anticipated that. Anticipating it just makes it that much more painful when it actually happens. <laughs> um. What? Um. What did I miss? What did I miss here? This is a difficult endgame, and I'm blitzing it, but um, I feel like I might have some chances, maybe? I'm not sure. That's a fork. Oops. I could have played that better. This sucks. This sucks. This hurts. <laughs> uh, this hurts so much because I'm going to lose on time in a one position.
Yep, 1700 beat us. So he was playing reactively the entire game, and he still managed to beat us. Um, but that's because I, he knew that particular structure better than we knew it. He was familiar with where all the tricks and traps and lands and all such lay in that position, and I was not so familiar with that position. That's what I get for experimenting with openings from time to time, is that I do get burned, even by a 1700. So what can you do? Uh, Bishop g4 apparently didn't happen, so we're just going to go and checkmate him. Yep, and there's the bishop h6. Alright. And probably he's going to play a5, right? Um... Just plant the knight over here, and then push f4 and g4. And then just push these pawns further and further up the board until they take all his things. And um, that's how you play the Sicilian. Sack, sack, mate. Um, yeah, let's push this before it gets too late. Now granted, I'm oversimplifying things, but also um, I'm noticing my opponent's not playing the most theoretical continuation here. So I'm playing kind of slack as well. Um, if you were playing more theoretical things, I might take his attack more seriously. Alright, there's e6. That's a discovery winning my piece on h four. Um, because I missed this double attack. So we'll attempt to make a gambit of it. Um, if he takes the h4 knight straight away, we'll push this check. And hopefully that will at least inconvenience him. If he doesn't take that knight, then I'll push this. Well, I'll still push the check. Um, and I don't know. This feels right. He's got multiple ways to defend that square. Um, but this is still like the thematic way for me to go about attacking here with like knight g6 and rook h4 threats. Unless, of course, I'm hanging the rook on f4. <laughs> oh god, this this could have gone better. Um, Alright, well, we'll just put the other rook on f4. Um, we lost the one rook, but we got a rook to spare, so everything's alright. There's nothing to worry about here. Nothing at all to worry about. Do I look concerned? Is losing the one rook going to um, stifle my attack at all? Uh, it should, but, you know. Uh, oh, I have knight g5. Why didn't I play this, like, forever ago? This just wins. That's so beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, dark squares. <laughs> um, this is a dark square, that's a dark square. They say three pieces is a mate, and we've got four over here. So, um, now he's got a defender, but we still outnumber him four to one. Um, kind of feel bad for the opponent at this point, who played a decent game. Well played, Brett. Um, just missed a tactic there at the end. Oh, well, that was exciting. Alright, so... 
Maybe I'll try to play a tournament opening of mine. We're gonna play... oh. Oh, hang on, he's playing the bishop's opening. Now it's an Evans Gambit. We can't turn down a Gambit. Refusing a Gambit would just be cowardly. <laughs> that said, this is not the most pleasant opening to play, but I've had good success with it in tournaments, so... Um, now, if he plays that, I forget if I'm supposed to just take on g7 straight away, or if I'm still supposed to play bishop e6. Um, it actually feels like I could just play queen f6, because I've got um, e1 covered. But also, if I just take on g7, then I can play bishops h3 very speedily. Um, yeah, we're just going to take g7. And if I get mated because of it, then I'll have learned an opening. Um, but this feels like I've got a good attack here. Even though, yes, I'm sacking the knight on c6. Or at least I'm attempting to. Um, this really feels like white's got a serious attack go, or black's got a serious attack going here. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to deal with the fact that his knight covers g2. feels like this should be the correct response to his knight move, because this covers a lot of the squares his queen could move to. Um, yeah, no, he does... well, I'm sorry, he doesn't get to collect the bishop right away. He's got a nice discovery available to him, but... Um, wait, can I do knight f3 check here? Survey says maybe, but I have to do this first. Um, knight of three check. And then my rook has a discovered attack. Um, and that doesn't seem good enough because he's got this pin here. So, dude, where's my mate? Rook takes g2. Knight takes g2. Queen g5. No, queen does not go to g5, ever. Um, bishop g2, and then I take on d2, but that's still not good enough. Feels like I have to throw this in before I start sacking anything. This does attack f2. Um, which might make the difference in some of these lines, I'm not sure. This also attacks h2. Um, I'm so confused. King h1 is what most scares me here. I forget if my king's moved or not. I don't think my king's moved yet, so I think I could castle if I had to. Um, I just don't know anymore. Okay, go ahead, take on h3. I know you're going to. That's not taking on h3. Okay. I've been duped. Very well played. Masterfully played. But also I'm like severely down on time, so I got crushed. In my own tournament opening, I got miniatured. Um, that's because I just didn't know how to play this. Memorizing the theory is hard. Possibly taking on... yeah, this... Uh, Pontic's d4 is never played, but why not? 
What's the theory here? Bishop e6 is still appropriate. Is what I played so terrible? Uh, it's Bishop e6 would have been better because it develops, but this is not bad. d5, this is still excellent development. Queen d7 would have been appropriate here. Okay, so this is where my position starts to get loose. And this check is not what... I've got mate in 7 in this position. Um, but good luck finding it. Um, yeah, no, I guess I just got outfoxed somewhere here. Okay, knight g4 was the critical blunder. Instead, I had to castle. And it's just a very tense position. And castling seems so counterintuitive because you can just munch this. But um, apparently I have a mating attack somewhere here. Knight takes, then we pin this. And somehow the queen can't get back to defend that. Or harass this, or in it. Like, f3 doesn't work, because, oh, there's the mate in one. But if he got a spare tempo, the queen would come back and defend against mate on g2. But, uh, there was no spare tempo here. I just had to go for it, and I didn't go for it. Um, so, that's egg on my face for, um,. For failing to play my tournament opening so convincingly. But bishop e6 would have made everything so much simpler. Just develop the pieces. Try to play a good attack. Um, and don't worry about mating in the opening. Even if Stockfish can pull off that kind of crazy mate in 7 stuff. Without an increment, I just don't have a chance to do that. Check. Check. Okay, we've got a target, folks. Um, boy, do we got a target here. This is one nice play. Even if he castles, I just take twice on e6, and I'm just winning a piece. Um, so apparently this refutes the French. Which is kind of a hard pill to swallow, because we saw my French game the other day, where I just, like, sacrifice. Well, how did that go? I forget. It was awesome, whatever happened, but... Oh, look at that. There's a fork. I'm protecting my bishop, which is hitting the queen. Um, but also hitting the rook on e8. Thankfully, I've got the rook on e1 defended. Yep, we just refuted the French guys. Alright, so, next opponent. Uh, wait, I go second. <laughs> My opponent gets to move first, and then I get to reply. Alright. Oh! We got a king's gambit. Let's accept the gambit and try that thing where people have been saying just play like d6 and h6, and this is just pleasant, apparently. Um... I forget how some of this theory goes, which is a shame because we spent quite a while on stream learning it, but I feel like I can't have messed up too badly just yet, right? And after this game we'll review it and, well, I'm sorry, we got a tournament to finish, but after the tournament we'll take a look and see uh, what I could have done better. But it feels like I got this right. I'm not too far off the mark. I've got these nice pawns connected there. I'm striking this bishop. I'm striking the knight. And, yeah, we've pretty much, without much effort, got a really nice attack going. Um, let's step back with the bishop so we don't, like, get uh, pinned. Uh, so, like, g4 doesn't strike with a lot of force. Um, okay. Just connect the rooks. Let's prepare to allow the queen to go to h3 if I have an opportunity or need to do so. And I anticipate having a need for my queen to go here in the future. 
as soon as like his queen's no longer able to cover f3, uh, we'll push f3 ourselves. Um, okay, he's threatening knight to e5, which I totally just let happen. Uh, except now my bishop covers this, so we'll just trade the bishop for the... Oh, that's a fork. Okay. Um, this got dicier than I thought it would be. It's got way dicier. So this bishop had that, so I couldn't do queen takes, but... Um, um... Oh, wait a second. He's just winning my piece in the center, because my queen's on a bad square. That's too unfortunate. That's too bad. Um, well, um, I don't have a way to conduct an attack after that. Our knight actually has to retreat to hit this. Uh, we're still going to hit it. He's still going to do the discover check, because why not? Um... Yep, yep, yep. And we'll take the bishop. He checks me again. I've got to run. He takes on b7. And my position hurts. Um, okay. Oh, he's got mate in one. Uh, but that's not good enough. we got to take the piece first and then do the mate in one. That's a, which is also not good enough, apparently. Um, okay, well, we're going to try to survive this. I don't know why, but maybe by trying something positive might happen. Unless he plays like the rook over. Alright, yeah, we'll concede. Whoops, wrong button. Alright, so 1600 just beat us. Um, again, after the tournament, we'll look at that and figure out what happened. Um, one thing that's happening, though, is that uh, apparently I seem to be losing a few rating points with this super special challenge. Um, here, if the King's Gambit's so great, why can't I play it? Now, granted, that was the f also the first time I was playing um, the accepted form of the Gambit uh, as black, so... Uh, I shouldn't expect immediate results the first time I play an opening, unless I've really mastered it. And I don't think you can master an opening just by reading about it, or just by practicing outside of games. You have to actually play it a bit, and get the general feel for how it works. Um, there's just a lot to learn. Alright, we plug d5. He's probably going to take it. It's always a natural reaction to take things, because that tends to reduce the tension in a position. Um, that said, I'm going to take this, because I favor this pawn structure. Like, this is an amazing pawn structure. And I will just push d5 and anchor this back here. And Unless I want to push and break this open, because I've got this half-open f-file to work with, too. The possibilities are twofold. <laughs> They're not limitless. There's exactly two possibilities here. My opponent doesn't have a light-squared bishop to kick away my queen, so we're just going to put the queen right there. Oh, he's helping me make a decision by making the decision himself. I respect that. Um, so we'll just keep developing, make an innocent little threat over here. Oh, he saw it. Well, all right, better set up the pieces for the next game then. No, 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 no. So we got to push. Um, oh, did I just hang upon? Damn it. 
Oh, uh, this is unfortunate. Um, this could have gone better. Oh, he didn't want it. Never mind. We're still in it, guys. We can still win this. Um, that's embarrassing. That's so embarrassing. But, hey, look, we got an attack. Pay no attention to, like, I don't know, all the tactics that we both missed. Wait, can I just take with queen on f7? Queen takes f7 just wins a queen. We'll do it. Check. Uh, rook takes e8 doesn't win on the spot, so we'll just take the queen instead. Yeah. Free queen. Who can object? Free rook. This is awesome. Alright, we won a game. Somehow. we got two minutes left in the tournament. Alright, can we make the top 100? If we win a game in two minutes, we might be able to make the top 100 in this tournament. Alright, we're playing black. What opening do I play to try to win? Um, e4, e5, right? Oh, we got a non-mover here. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Damn it. <laughs> okay, we're playing an elephant gambit. This seems sound. There's no way this could fail. Uh, yeah, we got a non-mover here. Uh, this is great. We can't move fast enough to win this within the time constraints of the event, so... Yeah, we'll just have to enjoy whatever place that we placed in. Instead of the whatever place we could have placed in place. Um. Queen takes, and there's the pin. And we've won a piece, but does it matter? Nope. Does not matter in the slightest, because the tournament has ended. That's too bad. We'll just castle one way or the other. Okay, we'll castle this way. And take this half op or open file, in fact. Um, and then I don't know, just like pile up on F2, right? That's how you normally do this. Um, check. Uh, okay, we'll just pile up on F4 instead. Oh, there's a nice little cheapo. Um, but he's not the only one who can spot cheapos. We got this nice little pin twice on this file, so might as well take advantage of it. Um, all right, and then we'll just take f4, and if he takes, I take, and if he takes, I take, and so forth. Trade queens, and mate in one, but it doesn't matter. Well, we got 134th place. That's not bad. Um, so I mentioned we were going to go back and look at that one game and figure out how we blundered an opening that I've played in many a tournament. That opening be well, I'm sorry, no, blunder this one that I'm learning, rather. I blundered another opening in this tournament. Um, but recently we've been studying this King's Gambit Accepted, um, with rumors that it's supposed to be a winning thing for black. So somewhere we diverged from the theory, and let's see where that was. C3, knight c6. Okay, so there's no hurry to push, to push knight f6 here. A master has played it once, but of the other 40 or 39 master games, uh, all the other ones go knight c6 and knight e7. 
I think in general what we studied was knight e7. Um, but knight c6 makes sense too. Um, but yeah, allegedly this king's gambit accepted is supposed to be a sure thing. <laughs> uh, or at least a very good thing for black. Um, and yeah, I think the key thing I have to adjust here is play knight e7 to g6. And if I can remember just that one little thing, uh, then probably I won't get massacred so badly when I play this. Now granted, here, since my opponent's been a little slower in their development, I could actually play knight c6 and wait for them to decide, are they going to pawn break with g3 straight away? Or are they going to try to push something on the queen side and give up a tempo? Or are they pushing d5, which make no sense? But, like, pushing e5 and d5 here don't make very much sense because uh, black's got the center pretty well covered. Um, I'm curious, if e5, just because it's spooky, what do we do? Okay, so we do have time for knight e7 here. Yeah, so I will experiment more with this. In fact, I'll do a thematic tournament of this King's Gambit Accepted at some point. Not right now, but we'll study it up a little bit more and then bring it into practice in another stream. But uh, until then, you know, this has been good fun. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time. Let's go host um, Peshka here. What's Peshka's handle again? <laughs>